The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Toledo Smith, starring Dan Duryea and Skip Holmeyer. Shirley Temple is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Success has a way of coming to those who keep close to God. Because the strength of prayer means not only God's help, it is also a personal incentive, a daily encouragement to keep trying in face of difficulties. You know, there's a saying that goes something like this, work as though everything depended on you, pray as though everything depended on God. It's the perfect formula for success, and all of us want to be successful, especially in our homes. We want our homes to be happy, and much of the happiness in any home depends on the mother of a family. God can and will help us if we ask his help, if we pray sincerely and earnestly and unselfishly. And with his help, all burdens are lighter. All difficulties can find a solution. There isn't a mother in America or the world today who won't find new strength and inspiration when her family gathers together for family prayer. Family prayer means God is there in your home. Family prayer is the greatest lift to success and happiness that any home can have. Shirley Temple will return following tonight's family theater play starring Dan Duryea and Skip Holmeyer in Toledo Smith. This is the story of a boy, a kid on the street corner. It might be your corner. It might be your boy. Not long ago, he came from an average home. But things happen. Sometimes they happen fast. Homes break up. That's how it was with Jimmy Smith with his home. And his big brother, Toledo, he was restless, wanted to travel, see things for himself. He'd been away for six months this last time. Jimmy didn't know where, didn't even know if he'd come back. And then one day, Jimmy got a penciled postcard. That was like Toledo. Write it briefly, without waste action. It read, Meet me Tuesday at the cafe on the corner. The cafe, you've seen places like it before. An eating place for everyone on the street. Stained counter, weak coffee, and a waitress named Mabel. Jim in, over easy. Give me a cup of coffee, Mabel. A glass of milk is what you get, Jimmy. Look, I said you I think wanted to... have a cup of coffee, Mabel. This is a celebration. Toledo! Yeah, yeah, I'm back. And don't bother telling me I'm looking great. I know. I've been waiting here for you, Toledo. I thought maybe something might have happened. No, nothing happened, kid. But things are gonna happen, start to happen from right now. You got a job now, Toledo? Oh, I got connections, baby. Oh. Good connections. But right now, I'm hungry. Let's have a couple of those famous steaks. Sure. Medium rare, a pair. You got a good memory, Mabel. You know, mine's not so bad either. Still get off at 9 o'clock? Yeah. Oh, what do you say we take in the town? Old times' sake, that sort of stuff. Might be an idea. Good. We'll start Toledo. over at... You're back. Jimmy said something about... Hiya, Norma. Toledo, where have you been? Me? Oh, I've been kicking around. You haven't changed a bit, Norma. Still always asking questions. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean anything, Toledo. I was only interested in... In my welfare. Sure, I know. Everybody's real interested in me and my kid brother. Toledo, I've Come got... on, Mabel. What's with those steaks? Come on up. Oh, by the way, Toledo, don't forget we got inflation. Our tops are two bucks a coffee. Two bucks? Say, kid, have you got any dough? Sure, Toledo. Dinner's on me. Is the kid gonna pay for our taking in the town, too? Don't worry, Mabel. I got a few big deals coming up in a couple of days. Well, come around and see me in a couple of days, then. Okay. 
I guess nobody's changed around here. Tell me, you're hungry, Mabel? Mm, I could eat. Good, you can eat those two steaks. Let's get out of here, Jimmy. Toledo, wait. What do you want, Norma? Can I walk with you? Why? I want to talk to you. Oh, it's your nickel, Norma. I, I wanted to talk to you alone. Well, I haven't got any secrets from the kid. Please, Toledo. You heard what he said, didn't you? Jim, get lost a minute, huh? I'll meet you at the corner. Okay. What's on your mind, Norma? Sit down here on the steps. Uh, Toledo, it's about Jimmy. Well, what about Jimmy? I don't want to worry you, Toledo. I know you got business or something that keeps you away, but Jimmy needs help. I've been trying to look out for him myself, but... Well, whatever kind of a scrape he's in, he doesn't need your help. The juvenile authorities were around last month. They asked questions. Perhaps I shouldn't have done it, but I said I was taking care of him. I even signed a paper. Well, who asked you to do anything like that? There have been robberies in the neighborhood. They were investigating. It might have meant the reformatory. Oh, so you think the kid's a thief, huh? I didn't say that. No, but you meant it. Keep talking, Norma. Tell me exactly what you're thinking. I'm no good, and the kid's going to end up just like me. That's what you're trying to say, isn't it? Oh, you're twisted, Toledo. You're all warped inside. You don't understand people because you don't try to. Everyone's your enemy. The whole world's against you. You've made up your mind to it. But that isn't enough to satisfy you. You've got to poison your own brother the same way. Yeah? You forgot one thing, Norma. Your soapbox. Good night. <laughs> It's like old times, Jimmy, waiting on the corner, wondering what Toledo and Norma are talking about. Toledo says he's got connections. He said so in the restaurant. Big plans. Same old Toledo. You're glad he's back, aren't you? He's your big brother. Sure, it feels good to walk across the street with him now and go up to the room, the same room, the same old torn carpet, the same old dresser. You can use the bottom three drawers for your stuff, Toledo. Hey, you want a hand with that suitcase? No, I got it, kid. Thanks. Jimmy. Yeah? How you been getting by since I've been gone? Dough-wise, I mean. Dough-wise? Yeah. Well... Look, look, you talk to me, small fry. Come on, what's the story? Well, I've been working after school in an auto park over on Sutter Street. Oh, and so you've been working, then huh? Then Mrs. Drake let me have the room for half price after you left. Oh, you kept it pretty good. Nice and neat. Well, Norma comes up sometimes and helps straighten things around. Hmm. She doesn't seem to be much of a housekeeper after all. How come? Leaving hubcaps laying around. Where'd you get this thing? Uh, fell off a new car the other night. Fell off? Sure. Well, what'd you bring it home for? Well, some of the guys are selling them. They're worth three bucks. Oh, three bucks, huh? So this is what you're doing. You're gonna be a penny ante chiseler, stealing hubcaps. If you're gonna steal, steal big. I didn't steal nothing, Toledo. Car ornaments, three bucks a throw. You'll never get rich at those prices. Tell me some more about your job, kid. I got an idea. We may be going into business together. Well, Jimmy. Looks like you're growing up. Toledo never took you in on anything before. He never told you much about those big deals of his. Makes you feel pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. You listen closely while he talks. Watch him light a cigarette. He never saw Toledo like this before. So quick, nervous, impatient. He almost frightens you a little. You answer his questions, but you're still not sure what's on his mind. And then he says for you to go on to bed. He's got things to do. You look out the window and watch him go down the street. Then he crosses over to the corner garage. Hiya, Joe. What? Well, I'll be doggone. So you're back, huh, Toledo? Yeah, for good. We still got those Thursday night poker games upstairs. You'll be showing up? Oh, maybe. Joe, you used to be quite a hand at painting cars. Used to be? Why, I don't... Okay, okay. Still the best job in town for the least amount of money, right? Check. And that back entrance to the garage. Is it still working, Joe? We don't use it now. Oh, everything on the up and up, huh? Got a better offer? Maybe. Why don't we go into the office, Joe, and have a talk? What about? The back entrance? 
Pancho, you've been reading my mail. Well, Jimmy, you don't know what Toledo's been doing these days. Only he seems busy, and he's even given you an assignment. Doesn't make much sense, though. Taking down names and addresses off the registration slips of new cars that come into the parking lot. You don't understand it. Nothing's happened with all this talking about big deals. So you're thinking maybe nothing's going to happen. That is, until Toledo tells you he'll meet you after work. And you walk down State Street with him. Let me see that list again, Jim. Here. This third guy. I've been casing his house. He's a lawyer. Goes to a meeting every Friday night about this time. I still don't get it, Toledo. I write the addresses down like you tell me, but that's all you tell me. Well, I'm gonna tell you something more right now. When this guy comes out of the driveway, you walk behind the car and play like you've been hit, got it? Uh-huh. He'll probably take you in the house and call a doctor. See that I get five minutes for a getaway. Getaway? We're putting a finger on the car. Now, here's how it'll be. Don't go in the house. Just stall. Then make yourself scarce and I'll meet you at the cafe. I didn't know we were going in for something like this. Kid, get smart. If you're gonna steal, steal big. Toledo, I don't want to be in business with you. You little fool. I figured this thing out. It's gonna work. Now tell it back to me. I don't like it. No kidding. Listen to me. You don't back out on me now. In every big deal, there's gotta be a boss man. Brains of the organization. Remember what I told you? Yeah. Did I ever give you a bum steer? No, I don't guess so. But we've never done any... This is your first lesson in being smart, kid. That's the whole secret. Be smart. Don't forget that. We're smart, huh? Come on. Question, Jimmy. How to become a partner in the Smart Guys Club? Your answer? Pay attention to your big brother. Believe what he tells you, even though something inside you tells you it's wrong. But... It's exciting, it's big business, a quick getaway. Sure, Jimmy, you're thinking of what you'll be able to tell the kids on the corner. You pulled it off without a hitch. Someday, you may be a senior partner. Joe, Joe, open up. Where you been? I've been ringing this bell for five minutes. I was in the front, Alita. Guess I didn't hear. Oh, that's great. I got a hot car and you can't hear the bell. Come on, let's get this thing inside. They're probably looking for this thing right now. You better get the engine number filed off quick. Give me an hour and the manufacturer himself won't be able to recognize this little beauty. Okay, I'll be over at the cafe. Oh, Joe. Yeah? I can use a C note. A hundred bucks? Yeah, just to keep our little arrangement nice and legal. All right, Toledo. I'm an easy guy to do business with. Here you are. Thanks. Hi, kid. Toledo, everything okay? Fine. Let's play this pinball machine. How'd it go with you? I had a little trouble getting away till he saw the car going. Toledo. What if the guy comes in the auto park again and recognizes me? He won't be able to prove anything. Relax, kid. Yeah, but Toledo... Hey, 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 look. Look at that 50,000. Half a buck, you can't beat it. Oh, I don't want to play. I need some more nickels. Mabel. Yeah? Change this for me, will you? Hey, a hundred bucks. We ain't got that kind of dough, Toledo. Well, then I guess I better take my business elsewhere. Hello, Toledo. Well, Taft. The guardian of law and order. Still pounding the same old beat, huh? At your money on the counter? Yeah. Quite a piece of change for a guy like you. Oh, I make them myself. Got a printing press up in the room. Jim, you got a couple of nickels? Yeah, here. Got a report on a stolen car tonight. Oh? It was seen in the neighborhood less than a half hour ago. Where were you about that time, Toledo? Check with my lawyer. Hello, Toledo. Officer Teff. Good evening, Miss Thomas. Anything wrong? Maybe. Maybe not. Once more, Toledo, where were you this evening? Go bother somebody else, will you? Ah, look at what you made me do. Tilt it. Toledo, maybe we better take a walk down to the station, you and your kid brother. Oh, Officer Tad. Yeah, Mabel? I can vouch for Toledo. He and the kid have been here for the last hour. 
You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I never forget a face. Or a hundred-dollar bill. Okay, Mabel. Maybe talking to you later, Tolina. Hope you don't get another tilt. Toledo, in spite of what Mabel says, you and Jimmy weren't in the cafe tonight. I know I had dinner here. Well, why don't you go tell Taft? <sighs> Toledo, what did you come back for? What is it that makes you want to keep on this way? Look, look at that one. Look, look, look. Whoa. Well, what do you know? A hundred thousand. That ought to make me the new champ. It wasn't so long ago, Toledo, that a kid, a good kid, was working in a grocery store. And we went to picnics together and dances. And, and I helped his young brother with his arithmetic. And their mother worked hard to make things oh, go. Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear any of that. I don't want you around, understand? Keep away from me. And keep away from Jimmy. You don't want to remember, do you? Well, things happen. It's all fine and dandy to sit on the front steps and give your girl your gold-plated high school ring and talk about the summer evening and say all the things you're going to do in this great, big, beautiful world. Maybe you believe it at the time, and it's the most wonderful thing that ever happened. A lot of things look good when you look back, but it all happened yesterday, and this is today. The world is big, all right, but it's far from beautiful. Huh. Listen to me. Looks like I need this soapbox. Uh, go on home, Norma. Go on. Yes, Jimmy, you heard what he said. And it sets you thinking, and you accept Toledo's ideas. Then you start to copy his walk and the way he talks. It makes you feel like a big shot to talk big, tell everyone how important you are, what you're able to do. You learn something new every day, and maybe one day you'll get a promotion. You'll be the brains of the organization. Yes, you're looking for new excitement now, Jimmy. You're keeping yourself busy. Hello, Globe Cafe? I want to talk to Mabel. This is Jimmy. Huh? She ain't there. She was there this morning. Quit? Oh, okay. Okay, no, no, uh-uh. Goodbye. Hi, Norma. Hey, uh, look, can I talk to you a minute? Of course, Jimmy, come in. There's some apples over there. No, no, this is a business call, Norma. Hey, uh, you hear about Mabel quitting? No. Well, she did. I just called the cafe. Uh, look, I can't get in touch with Toledo before this deal goes through, but I'm supposed to meet him later. I don't know whether he'll like this or not, but I gotta trust you. Well, you can trust me, Jimmy. It's this way, see? We had a deal all worked out with Mabel. She was our alibi. Alibi? Look, I know you used to like Toledo a lot, didn't you? You'd help him, wouldn't you? Is he in trouble? No, it's this envelope. There's 50 bucks in it. You can use 50, can't you? Where'd you get that? If Taft comes around, you tell him we were upstairs all evening. That's all you have to do. You want me to lie for you? Jimmy, I can't do that. Oh, it's just like Toledo said. You talk about doing things, and when I really need Jimmy, you, Jimmy, we've you're... known each other a long time. I helped you any time I could, didn't I? Oh, what's that got to do with it? I even told the authorities I'd be your guardian. Jimmy, the way things are going now, you're heading okay, straight... Okay, okay, I get it. That's that. I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is, I'm sure it's not right. Who says so? Listen to me, Jimmy. There are lots of kids like you. You know what's right, but you're going wrong. And the worst part of it is it's not all your fault. Someone you think a lot of fills you with big ideas, tells you there are shortcuts to get where you think you want to go. There are no shortcuts, Jimmy. And if you keep trying to cut corners, pretty soon you'll be hiding in them. I better go find Toledo. Mark another one off the list, Jimmy. Someone else you don't like anymore. Someone else you can't depend on. Just one of those little people Toledo talks about. It's too late to find an alibi now, so you meet Toledo at the auto park. 
Yes, there's a new angle in the technique tonight, just like Toledo said. She wouldn't listen to me, Toledo. Oh, you ought to know better than to ask her. Don't bother with her anymore, like I told you. Okay. We'll get this thing into the garage before anybody misses it. Turn on the radio. Let's see if it's on the police calls yet. Why'd you take it off the parking lot? Why didn't we do it like before? Kid, you gotta be smart. Some will catch on if you pull the same stunt car too 19, often. Oh, to I station. get it. Shh, shh, quiet. Repeat. Car 19, report to your station. Attention all cars, vicinity 3rd and Maple, code 2, GTA suspect. Hey, that's Three a stolen young, car. 128. Hey, that's Repeat. us, Toledo. GTA yeah, suspect. Yeah, I know. Turn that thing off. Three young. Hey, you went through the signal. Yeah, we gotta get to the good... A police car. I can see him. Shut up. We're gonna get caught. The garage is right around the corner. Take it easy, kid. Sit here. I'll ring the bell. Joe! Joe! Open up! Joe, do you hear me? Open up! Hey, Toledo, there. We better run for it. Jim, get out of there. Wait, Toledo! Don't leave me. Wait for me, please! <laughs> Dissolve one partnership. Toledo goes one way, and Jimmy, you go the other. And you learn something else, Jimmy, something you never realized. The police are smart, too. They work fast and surely. And the next thing you know, you've been outsmarted. You don't have to plan alibis now, Jimmy. You're a ward of the city, fingerprinted, locked up, and on your white card filed under Smith, it says, Hold for district attorney. All right, son, come with me. Hello, Jimmy. What are you doing here, Norma? Officer Taft asked me to come. He says you won't answer their questions. I ain't talking, see? You're in trouble, serious trouble. Don't you realize that? These men think you know where Toledo is. You've got to tell them. They can't make me talk. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, how can I reason with you? What kind of thinking has Toledo taught you? Can't you see nobody can help you if you get this way? Norma, Do you I... know where Toledo is? No. Is that the truth? Yes. Norma. Norma, I'm scared. Oh, Jimmy, why weren't you scared a long time ago? Didn't you know what you were doing? I don't want to get sent up. I'll do everything I can for you. You can depend on me, Jimmy. You believe that? Yes, I believe you. County Courthouse, Municipal Court 23, Judge Ralph Stevens presiding. Yes, Jimmy. You feel kind of small as the bailiff takes you into that big room. No arrogance now, just anxiety. You listen to the man in the long black robe. James Smith, this is an unpleasant task I must perform. Here you are, a boy of 15, and somehow, some way, you've been led into mistakes. What you did was wrong, you know that? Yes, sir. And you know why it was wrong? There are some 140 million people in this country. We have laws to protect their rights and their property. Everyone's entitled to these things, and in turn, no one is entitled to infringe in them. But there's something more than that, Jimmy. There's such a thing as a basic moral law. These are high-sounding words and may be hard for you to understand. Uh, do you know the Ten Commandments? I heard them a couple of times in Sunday school. If you had practiced them, Jimmy, you wouldn't be here now. That's what's been missing in your life, and maybe a number of people are equally responsible for that. But you are here before this court. Therefore, it's the decision of this court... Your Honor! Uh, order! Your Honor! Order! Toledo. I know this isn't the right yes, way to do Toledo. it, but I gotta talk to you. I'm, I'm Toledo Smith, Judge. I don't look so good. That's on account of I've been hiding Young out. Young man, you're violating... You gotta hear me out, Judge. I got a hold of a paper yesterday. 
read about what was happening. Yeah, and I know what I'm walking into, but that's not important anymore. Judge, I thought I was a big shot. I was teaching him things. I was telling him how to, how to do big things. But he didn't want to mix in this, honest judge, but he believed everything I said. I want to tell him while I'm standing here it was all the wrong way. This is the truth, the straight of it. I guess there are other guys like me steering kids bad. Those are the ones that ought to go to jail, judge. Guys like me. But the kid isn't like me. Give him another chance. Please, judge, you got to give him another chance. <laughs> Half a mile from the courthouse to the railroad station, Jimmy. A group of prisoners handcuffed in twos. And the story's almost at an end. Norma grips her hand as the prisoners start boarding the train. Next incoming train, the El Capitan. Local 28, now loading on track two. Board? Getting ready to leave. Yeah. Take care of yourself, kid. You too, Toledo. Uh, it won't be tough, kid. Not anymore. I'll be seeing you, huh? Sure, Toledo. Look out for him, huh, Norma? You can count on me, Toledo. Yeah. I should have learned that a long time ago. Huh? Come and visit me. We will. I'll write you. Every day I'll write you. So long. So long. Toledo Smith. <laughs> This is Shirley Temple again. You know, listening to Dan Duryea and Skip Homer's splendid portrayals in Toledo Smith, I got to thinking of the variety of causes, the many reasons for the juvenile delinquency you read so much about in the newspapers today. But isn't it true, of all influences in children's lives, our homes are the most important influence? Outside organizations are wonderful, but they can only supplement the example and inspiration children should first receive from those closest to them, from their parents. If on this day, all homes throughout the land began the practice of daily family prayer, within a year, most of the juvenile delinquency problems that exist today would disappear. Family prayer is an insurance against delinquency. Family prayer is the insurance of peace and happiness in our homes, because with God's protection and help, the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Dan Duryea and Skip Holmeyer for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Mark Carney and Lou Reed for writing tonight's play and to Max Tur for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Ann Tobin, Rita Lynn, Jim Nusser, Ken Christie, and Cy Kendall. Barry Kroger was your narrator. Next week, our family theater stars will be Dennis Day and Alan Reed, radio's Falstaff Openshaw, in Wanted, One Baby. Your host will be Paul Henry. This is Shirley Temple saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be Dennis Day and radio's Falstaff Openshaw, Alan Reed, with Paul Henry as host. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.